all systems go. Clear for liftoff. What is going on, Ship It Nation YouTube station? Friday, MLB Witching Hour show here. I got my guy, Hamwich, as always, each and every Monday and Friday, looking to bring the winners. We've got a massive, massive slate. I'm going to cut to the chase right away. We ain't got time to waste around 12 games to talk about. There is obviously some cross-off games, 11 games, excuse me, because one game that Yankees and Cleveland Guardians game did get rained out. But if you guys are new, Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton. How much, man? Happy Friday. Bring you in right away. You are uh, taking care of some business there. I'll leave it at that. Uh, but, man, what's going on, brother? Should be an interesting little slate here to talk about. Things, uh, we're going to be a little different on, on, on some things. Should always make it for a fun show. But uh, what's going on, brother? How are you doing? What? No, happy Friday. Sorry for the delay. And, yeah, two things. First thing to touch off on, Nades. My man, Nades, was crushing it on the last – Slate on Wednesday. I think he got second in the $25 single entry. Just crushing it over there. But, man, I got to go back to Monday night, Nades, when my guy, Miles Michaelis, just shit all over the Philadelphia Phillies, was in the winner on FanDuel. I saw it. My guy, Nerdy Tenor, shit to my seat. Hey, those Phillies came back, man, and Michaelis, man, he was so close. He was still on the winner, Nades. What do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, Nades? Just me owning you with Miles Michaelis. Yeah, unfortunately, you ain't got screenshots to uh, to to show for it. So I'll still take the victory lap there. Uh, a little last second, uh, little last second uh, lineup there for me Wednesday night. I'm gonna ship every contest. I ran out of time to enter a bunch of other contests. Uh, only had about seventy dollars in play or something cash from was two grand. So that was a nice night overall. There made some close calls um, and uh, had some uh, very good very good week overall in baseball. Looking to keep it rolling here tonight, but yeah. yeah. I'll give you credit. Good call on Miklas there. Yeah, the Phillies. I mean, man, they're just cheeks. But uh, we'll talk through it. Let's uh, let's let's jump right in, Hamwich. What do you say? Uh, let's talk pitching here. It's an interesting one here from the spend up position. We're gonna go eight k and above. There's a lot of guys in here. I'm gonna throw out a couple names for you in particular. Talk about Andrew Abbott for sure. Definitely mention him. Definitely mention Max Fried, who's been off to a terrible start. Mention Fastball Freddy and then Kevin Gosman all the way up at the top of 10K. Seems to be clear-cut the chalks pitcher of the slate. But you got guys like Yamamoto in there. Obviously a very young, talent, very, very solid, talented pitcher in there. Bryce Miller. You got some uh, Reed Detmers and Tanner Hawk in that uh, game there. Um, two not great offenses, but very, very good hitters park and very good hitting conditions with wind blowing out to left field there in Wrigley. But uh, I do think this is definitely a loaded range um, and uh, definitely need to spend some time on it here. So what's it kind of look like for you right now? Eight can above on DraftKings pricing pitching. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting slate. Eight can above. I'll kind of break it down the way I see it. And let's just start at the top just, just for pricing purposes. Kevin Gaussman, you alluded to it. He's going to be the most popular pitcher on the slate. I mean, I think close 40, 50, 60 percent in single entry stuff. And I just don't see how you can get off of this, this guy tonight. I mean, I think he is locked and loaded on FanDuel for sure, just based on it's a one pitcher site. Uh, if you want to get different at GPPs, you can. But man, he's taking on this Colorado Rockies team, slated to score three runs tonight. Striking out 30% of the time against right-handed uh, pitchers last season. Gaussman striking out right around 30%. We know when Colorado goes on the road, they are just absolutely abysmal. Gaussman has not been Kevin Gaussman so far to start the season. Fastball, about a mile per hour off what we're used to seeing from last year. But, man, I think this is a smash spot. We have him as our highest-ranked pitcher over here uh, on DK by almost five DraftKings points. For me, he's clear cut one uh, number one pitcher on the slate tonight. So I'd go with with Galston one. Yamamoto is going to come in virtually unowned on DK, and I think rightfully so. Ninety six hundred, too much in my opinion. Uh, granted, it was a different game, but he's faced this he's faced this San Diego team 
already one time this year and gave up five runs in the first inning. So at that price against this offense, no thank you for me. Uh, number two for me on the evening would be Bryce Miller taking on these Cubs. These Cubs strike out a whole bunch. Miller strikes out 25% of right-handed hitters, and the Cubs have five slated to be in that lineup. So keep an eye out on that Cubs lineup. It's down to three or four right-handed hitters. I would say no thank you. If it was up to six or seven, I would say lock and load at 8,900. And then um, uh, Max Freed, yeah, love Max Freed tonight. Gets a ballpark upgrade going into Miami. Taking on a Miami team, it's not very not very dangerous. You got Jake Berger. Uh, outside of that, to me, I don't think you have any problems. You got lefty lefty uh, gets him versus Jazz Chisholm. You got a high strikeout team, so I think Max Freed is number three for me. And then my kind of my wild card in this range, Nate. I know we were talking about a little bit. Then I'll pass it back over to you. It's going to be Michael King taking on this Dodgers team. I know it's the Dodgers. I know Hoops getting fired up because it's Dodgers Friday night in L.A. But, man, Michael King has excellent strikeout stuff. And outside of the big three, in my opinion, on this Dodgers team, they strike out a whole bunch, especially at the bottom of the lineup. So he would kind of be my wild card if you wanted to go there. And then I didn't touch on Freddie Peralta. I'm personally not picking on this O's team back in Baltimore. So no thank you there. I do like Freddie. He's a great pitcher, but just not tonight for me. And then no Andrew Abbott, no Reed Detmers. I thought about Trevor Rogers just for the ballpark, uh, but not going to do it against the Braves. That'll do it for me, Nades. I know I was long-winded. Inter in interested to hear your takes on that. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't know how much different we could be up here, but, hey, that's going to make for another interesting show up here. Um, I'm out on Kevin Gossman. Um, Chalky's pitcher by a wide margin on DraftKings. And not to say that, yeah, I mean, people probably just think I come on here and just say the chalk and just say never play the chalk. That's not the case. But when a guy is the most expensive pitcher on the slate, I get the matchup, right? I do get the matchup. I get the career numbers on Gosman. But number one, to start the year, number one, he's not stretched out. And number two, he's at a career low in velocity on his pitches. Correlate that with the most expensive pitcher and the chalkiest pitcher on the slate. After what we just saw to start the year, he's not pitched stretched out in pitches. I mean, if if he had any other matchup, I would probably be uh, – I mean, if he had any other matchup on the board, people probably would be also fading him. People are playing him because it is the Rockies outside of Coors Field, right? They're, they're coming into Toronto. Obviously, Toronto is also the chalk offense as well, so people think he's going to have run support. I just like Freddie Peralta much more for $700 cheaper. Love the matchup. On, I, I get it, right? Baltimore's offense is scary. But, I mean, Freddie, I just love Freddie. I loved how he looked in his first start. Granted, it was at home. I'm going right back. Freddie Peralta is my SP1. I'm fully fading Gausman. I got two teams tonight on DraftKings. I will have zero Kevin Gausman in my lineups. My second favorite pitcher up here in this top tier is actually Yamamoto here. Um, I get it. I mean, he ha he's looking like a 25 to 30% strikeout rate pitcher here. He threw a lot of pitches as well. Um, and he's going to be unowned up here at the top. So as a differentiation piece, I, I see our guy over here. Um, that does a core for us at the nation does have him in his core over here. I'm not going to give away who whose core he's in, but he is in a core over here already up on the site. Down Moto, I like a ton. Freddie Peralta, I like a ton. Max Freed, I'm going right back to the wall. Max Freed, like this matchup here. If you actually look at the 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 numbers for Max Freed in that first start where he did get lit up, I mean he had a 63% ground ball rate. On, on the hitters. It just so happened that everything went wrong, possibly could have went wrong. Um, those ground balls found the holes, and he kind of just got baby up to death there. So I like going right back to the wall, Max Freed here. It is a park upgrade for him as well. The Braves often should give him some run support, so I do like Max Freed. And then the other two guys up in this top tier I like. Reed Detmers, I think, is in a good spot here. It is tough with the weather, right? Hitters park, wind blowing out in Fenway, but seems like a lot of these guys, right? Tanner Hawk has a tough matchup with the same park conditions there. Cincinnati, right? Um, there in, in Chicago, Abbott has a tough, similar wind blown out in Chicago. Um, so I do think Reed Detmers and then Andrew Abbott would be my fifth. So up here at the top, it's Freddie Peralta, number one. Max Freed, number two. Yamamoto, three for me. Dep or um, Abbott, four. And then Detmers would be five, ranking up in this top tier. Um, it is kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm out on King, Rogers, out on the rest of these guys. Just don't see no need. Need I like uh, Freddie Peralta much more than Bryce Miller, so I just find that extra $400. And then um, Yamamoto just gets squeezed between Peralta and Gosman, I think. So I do think he is an interesting tournament, tournament play um, here tonight. 
Let's jump into the guys below 8K here on this range. I'm going to throw out a couple names for you here, Hamlich. Number one, Tyler Wells facing this Brewers offense here at home. Touch on him. Touch on Paul Blackburn, who I actually like a ton down in this lower tier. He's my favorite pitcher below 8K. I love the matchup. He ranks very well in our pitcher rankings over here. And I think a lot more people go to the other side of that game and uh, go all the way down to the bottom with a guy like Jake Irvin. I'd much rather find the the extra salary to get up to Paul Blackburn, but hit on him and then hit on Luis Severino as well, facing this Kansas City Royals team. Um, those are kind of the three guys that are getting the most ownership down here, and I do think Luis Severino is going to be quote unquote chalkiest option below 8K. Any interest in anyone down here that you're looking at? Yeah, I won't play a lot down here, but yeah, uh, for me, it's going to be Tyler Wells and his 30% strikeout rate versus left-handed hitters. Looking at this lineup, it's still the projected lineup, but they have, I think it looks like four left-handed hitters in that lineup for the Brew Crew. So I don't mind Tyler Wells uh, at 7,700 for sure. If you need him, you need to go there. I'm, I am with you on, on Paul Blackburn. I like him a lot. Great ballpark. Uh, not a very good offense in the Nationals. 7,600. And then I was looking at uh, I I don't really like Severino. I mean this 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 Kansas City team has been smacking the ball all over the park. Um, you know the Mets is a tough place to hit, but I don't I don't I don't think that they'll have any issues tonight. I think they hit ten runs in back to back games against the Astros. And then I was looking at Jake Irvin. He just doesn't. I mean the A's strike out a whole bunch. And if Jake if you're saying Jake Irvin is chalk, I think we currently have him uh, right right below ten percent. He just doesn't strike anybody out. Less than a 20% strikeout rate to both sides of the plate. Uh, no thank you. If you were going to go down there, I know I heard you say that the uh, that the Blue Jays were going to be chalk. Ryan Feltner coming off a 10K performance last time out in Colorado. I don't think that's the craziest GPP play. Actually, you always talk about it. I love doing it. Double leverage against the chalky offense. So, yeah. So, it would start with Tyler Wells for me. Blackburn, that would kind of be where I'd go unless I want to get really different then I would get Feltner in there as well. Yeah, no, excellent breakdown there. Um, for me, the only guy I'm really even considering down here, um, I, I would – I mean, there's there's a bunch of 20-plus offenses here to choose from that you can stack up. You can find value bats everywhere. Um, would be Paul Blackburn. He's the only guy I'm going to mess with. I do like him. He will be on one of my teams for sure on DraftKings. Um, so I do like Paul Blackburn. Luis Severino, I'm out on Severino. The, the Royals are actually number six in the uh, – baseball right now throughout the the course of the season and runs scored number third in iso as well um and correlate that with um heavy ownership going to him due to the price and due to teams due to people wanting to spend up on the toronto bats obviously atlanta dodgers got high power offenses expensive offenses on the slate so i'm out on him only down here the only guy i would even consider is paul blackburn so it's pretty much a six pitcher site for me or a six pitcher slate is kind of how I'm honing in on it and just hoping that uh, that I can uh, make it make it work tonight tonight here. So I will go ahead and rank my top six pitchers on the slate and then I'll throw it over to you before we go game by game. I'm going to go Freddie Peralta number number one, Max Free two for me, Blackburn three considering his salary. I'll go Abbott four or uh young moto four abbott five reed detmers six is kind of how i'm ranking it um i'll throw it over to you how much what's your rankings before we go game by game yeah for me it's kevin galsman on both sites uh and i think he's a, a damn near lock over on FanDuel with his uh quality start strikeout and win equity really like Kev kevin galsman now he's number one number two for me would be max freed i like him a little bit better then I do Bryce Miller, who would be number three. Number four for me, I'm going to go down to uh, Paul Blackburn. I like Blackburn tonight. Then I'm going to round it out with Tyler Wells, be number five. And if I was getting contrarian, I'd go Michael King with his strikeout upside at 8K versus that Dodgers team. Yeah, no, excellent breakdown there. Say hi to a couple of people in chat. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Jake's always in here in the chat. King of Smacks always in here. Mario, what's what's going on? Rance is in the building. Gator Nation, as always. Uh, our guy Nguyen's always in here. So we appreciate you guys. If you guys would, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you guys are not a member yet and you want to get into our Shipping Nation community, the best community in the industry, our members talk for themselves over there. Use that promo code HOOP15. HOOP continues to print in every single sport. HOOP15. 
brings your monthly package down for all sports to about two dollars a day cover every single sport we got the masters going on i saw our member ship 20k in the showdown streets for round one of the masters we got you covered all the way throughout the weekend for the masters obviously i got you covered for nhl mlb we got a full season ahead we got the back half of the nba season here as well Got you covered everything. Hoop 15 brings it down to about $2 a day. No better deal, no better rate in the industry to join the winners today. How much? Let's do it. Let's go game by game here. We're going to kick off the first game on the slate here, the Brewers and the Orioles in this one. Four and a half implied run total for the Brewers. Four and a half implied run total for the Orioles as well. Peralta on the mound. Tyler Wells on the mound. You mentioned Tyler Wells. I love Peralta, but, I mean, Peralta is not bulletproof by any means here, especially outside of American Family Insurance, uh, the AmFam field there in Milwaukee. Touch on this one. I do think this is an interesting game in terms of bats. I prefer the Brewers' bats over the Orioles' bats, as Peralta is my top pitcher on the slate. So I'm out on these Orioles, but obviously you got Duke, got some power bats in there, right? Gunnar Henderson um, can can – be played against anyone after his season last year, Santander, Ryan O'Hearn. But my interest more relies on the Brewers. What are you looking at in this one? First game of the slate, Brewers, Orioles. Yeah, won't be won't be stacking this this game up uh, by any stretch. But there are three players that I'm interested in as one offs. Willie Adamas at the shortstop position. I think he's batting cleanup or projected to bat cleanup tonight. Really like his power against Tyler Wells. To take him over the wall, and then yeah, Gunnar Henderson, uh, you can play him versus anybody. Like him leading off, one off, another shortstop. Obviously, you can't play two on DK. And then Ryan O'Hearn, it's a good little value play on both sites. Thirty four hundred dollars on DraftKings. I don't mind him as a one off, but man, I mean, Freddie's a, a good pitcher. I'm just not picking on picking on him uh, or picking on this Orioles team. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Freddie can put up fourteen Ks absolutely, but. Give me some Gunner, give me some O'Hearn, then Odomis on the other side as one-offs. Yeah, I don't like stacking either of these teams. I won't have any Orioles. I mean, I think he, Colton Kowser, I saw some talks in chat there. Um, I mean, he's got really bad numbers against right handed pitching in his limited sample so far, but he is cheap. Hitting in the two spot at the outfield position, I think he's solid. Um, he's got a good lineup position uh, sandwiched between Mullins, O'Hearn, Santander, and Henderson, so I don't think he's the craziest play. Gunnar Henderson, I think, is fine, obviously. Um, but outside of that, no Orioles for me. I do like Freddie Peralta, so we differ there. I actually like some of these Brewers quite a bit. Christian Yelich is on fire right now. They got some young talent here, right? Bryce Terang, Churro, um, always threats to steal. And the Brewers, I think, are what? One of the one of the leading teams in the MLB in terms of stolen bases and stolen bases attempts. Um, I haven't looked at the stolen bases numbers that Wells or anything like that allow there, but Adley's not behind the dish. It is going to be James McCann. So I think that gives slight boost to these runners as well for some of these brewers, right? Um, that will run Christian Yelts will steal some bases. Obviously, Sal Freilich, Churro, Bryce Terang, some of these guys. Um, this Brewers team is very young. They're fun to watch. I like William Contreras quite a bit as a catcher at 4,900 up there, Christian Yelich. So mini stacks uh, for me on the brewers. Um, and more just the value guys, um, right, That as kind of a last man in, one-off type thing for me. Let's jump into the next game here. I want you to hit on this one in particular on the Blue Jays side because Blue Jays clear-cut the chalk offense on the slate, facing Feltner outside of Coors Field here. Games in Toronto, looking at the weather in this one. Um, obviously, the uh, roof – does look to be closed there in Toronto. I don't see the roof open, so doesn't really matter in terms of weather. But talk on Toronto here against Feltner. I know you talked about liking him a little bit as a punt kind of contrarian option, just a little double leverage. But do you still have interest in any of these Blue Jays bats and then any Rockies for you against the chalk pitcher of the slate? Yeah, definitely no, uh, definitely no Rockies for me, not even as one-offs. I think uh, Gaussman mows them down, and I'm not even going to play – these Blue Jays just looking up and down, uh, you know, their roster, the pitches Feltner throws, how they do against it and everything that I'm looking over here at the nation. I just, I'm just not stacking this Blue Jays team. I mean, I hope they're chalk. Uh, they've busted time and time again when they're chalk and I just don't see anything even as a one-off. If they're on the winter tonight, Nades, we'll know early. We can shut the laptop down and go to bed because I won't be on these Blue Jays at all. 
Yeah, good thing is there's 22 other offenses that hopefully um, or I should say, what, 21 other offenses, right, with 11 games on the slate that uh, hopefully can outscore them because I'm not playing the Blue Jays either tonight. Um, I get the reasoning for it, right, Feltner. Um, I mean, low strikeout rate overall. Obviously, he had a huge performance that first game to, to start the year, but his season numbers last year were just an 18, uh, 19 percent strikeout rate to both sides of the plate on the road. Um no Blue Jays for me. I think Vlad is fine, obviously, but with their ownership, everything included, I'm just going to be out on them. I like other offenses a lot more that we're going to talk about on the slate. So off them, no Rockies for me. I just rather like the other pitchers. I like Peralta more. I like Yamamoto more than Gausman. So it's just more of a uh, ownership and salary concern on the pitcher standpoint than uh, loading up on the Rockies' bats. Yankees' Guardians got postponed, so we're going to jump over to probably the best hitting environment on the slate. It's in Fenway, Angels, Red Sox, Detmers, Tanner Hawk, two solid real-life pitchers on the mound, two pitchers that I think you can both play tonight in MME. But I also think you can stack both these offenses up here tonight just due to the park, due to the weather. It's about 55, 60 degrees in Fenway throughout the duration of this game and 15 to 20-mile-an-hour winds blowing out towards that monster in left field. Touch on this one. Mike Trout looks like the vintage Mike Trout right now. He's crushing the baseball. He's hitting third tonight here. So hit on him. Hit on any Red Sox you got interest in. I think this is an interesting stacking game versus kind of picking one-offs here for me personally. Yeah, you alluded to it. That uh the weather, man, 20 miles an hour. I mean, that's when balls you get you get balls up in that 20 mile an hour wind, it just pushes them out. And it's and it's on the monster. Might see more doubles than homers. And obviously you, you can uh get some of those doubles manufactured a couple of those in a row and those you know those are good for your stacks as well just looking at this angels roster though man it's tough to stack i mean outside of trout like who are you going to play the corpse of anthony rendon no thank you taylor ward can't bat his body weight i mean aaron hicks no thank you it's just a tough ask well, i'm out on the angels outside of obviously a one-off with trout you said he's knocking the cover off the ball and he'll have that monster in left field so i, I definitely love mike trout and on the other side uh I'm not going to play Reed Detmers, but um, I, I don't mind. I don't mind, you know, fading this Red Sox team, if you will. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, who's who's had a really good start to the season, would be my favorite one. But I mean, some of these names are guys that you never heard of. I just don't see him getting it done tonight, Nate. It's another game that I'm going to cross off. We'll have a little bit of Tyler O'Neill. We'll have a little bit of Mike Trout. You know, if I'm doing 20 plus, but outside of that, I can't see either one of these teams being on the winner tonight. Yeah, I mean, the Angels, I think they are – this this lineup is a low strikeout lineup overall. I mean, just 20% last season on the road against right-handed pitching here. Looking at Tanner Hawk's numbers from last season, overall a pretty low strikeout pitcher, 21%, but he is a ground ball pitcher, and I hate stacking against ground ball guys. Just a very low fly ball rate, especially the right-handed hitter. So that doesn't help Mike Trout, but obviously Mike Trout can uh, – can get the ball up off of anyone. He's a 40%, almost a 40% fly ball rate hitter um, over the course of last season. So he would be my favorite. Taylor Ward, I think, is fine. And then I actually like Logan O'Hop down there at the in the in the eight spot from a catcher position at 3,900. He's got some power against right-handed pitching. Obviously got the good hitting conditions. You could do a little wraparound stack like a Logan O'Hop, um, uh Nolan, Nolan Chanel, um, Mike Trout kind of three-man stack or even like a wrap Logan O'Hop and, and Mike Trout um, I don't mind those two those are my two favorite and then on the Red Sox side I mean I like Reed Detmers quite a bit here but the weather everything it's just man it's just hard to stack up these teams I mean with this lineup that's projected for the Red Sox I'd give a little boost to, to Reed Detmers here um, because 26 percent strikeout rate against left-handed pitching at home last season um, and the Red Sox got even worse this year than than they were last year but my favorite bat in this game by far is going to be Tyler O'Neill um, for the Red Sox. Fly ball guy, right-handed power there against the lefty. Good reverse splits. Had a 235 ISO last season against left-handed pitching. So I like him. I like Jaron Duran up at the top. Um, and uh, Rafaela as a value outfielder there. All have good numbers. But don't like stacking either one of these guys outside of MME, just betting on the weather um, and hopefully catching an offense that comes in hot in in a good hitting park um is outside of that but probably not going to stack personally myself either one of these offenses 
in my two teams tonight on DraftKings. In MME, I do think it is a good route to take, however. Let's jump into Kansas City and the Mets. Severino on the mound, Michael Walker on the mound, and these Royals are red hot. Now they leave Kauffman Stadium. I call it Coors Field 2.0. Heading to New York here to face Severino. Clear Severino's definitely going to pick up a decent amount of ownership over on DraftKings here as an SP2 at his $6,800 price point. In terms of weather, another game with the wind blowing out at about 15 miles an hour or so out to left field. About 60 degrees as well, so pretty good hitting conditions as well. Guaranteed 19 at-bats for the Royals. Royals won me a lot of money this week. I like Nelson Velasquez. Always going to bring him up against the righty. Guy's just got a ton of power. Little boomer bust, right? Strikeout or nothing pretty much with, with Velasquez unless he kind of hits it off the wall or something for a double. But touch on the Royals, touch on the Mets here. Any interest in offense here for you? Yeah, Nate's another game, man. Another game I'm not stacking. Your boy Vinny P. I saw him in your lineup the other night. Vinny P was on fire on Wednesday. Love me some Vinny P against Severino and a 16% strikeout rate versus lefties. Uh, so I don't mind Vinny P. Uh for the Royals. Outside of that, it's gonna be tough sledding for me as it relates to any more Royals. You said Velasquez. I don't, I don't hate that. Um, and then on the other side, I'm not stacking these Mets, man. They've been bad uh all season long. They go out and put up a 16 burger on the Braves yesterday, but I'm going to pay to see it again. Another one. Hey, if the Mets can do it, I'll uh, be shutting the laptop because I will not be stacking against Michael Waka Flocka and uh, this New York Metropolitan team. No, no, thank you for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit different Royals um, over at the slate plan. They are in the slate plan. I'm sure you checked it out. If you are a member the slate plan has been live since about noon or so today, typically we like to get our content up very early core reports, everything for you guys to dive in and then ask strategy and, and questions in the discord based on the content that's up on the website. I do like these Royals as a sneaky stack. They're just swinging good sticks right now. They're stealing bases, right? Adam Frazier at 2,800 at a weak second base position. I get it right. He's not a good, He's not a good power guy, but he's a low strikeout hitter against the guy that can't strike out lefties in Luis Severino. I mean, just a 16% strikeout rate last season against lefties. Struggled with power. Lefties hit for almost a 300 ISO against him as well. He had a fly ball rate almost approaching 30% as well for lefties. So I'm going right back to the, the well with these lefties. Vinny P, MJ Melendez, Adam Frazier would be my three favorite throwing a Velasquez, throwing a Bobby Witt, who is always a threat against no matter who he's facing, stolen base and power upside. These Royals are just, I like riding hot offenses in baseball. Royals aren't going to have any ownership tonight. So um, I do like the Royals quite a bit in terms of a stack. It's nice to get the guaranteed ninth thing at bats as well. Um, so I do like these Royals. For the Mets, no interest in the Mets really. Pete Alonzo, you can play him any slate. DJ Stewart, I always mention DJ Stewart, especially against the righty at home. Good power guy, but more boom bust. He is only 2,800, and uh, 2,800, he hits you a home run. You're, you're swimming. It doesn't matter if he goes one for four. Um, he gets you that home run. That's 14 points on DraftKings, and uh, you're sitting pretty good at his price point. Outside of that, no interest really in the Mets. Let's jump to the next one here, the Braves, right? Uh, it, it's a slate where I think the Braves are in a good spot. Not going to pick up a garner a ton of ownership, but if you look at the prices, that's likely why, right? The likes of Acuna, Albies, Riley, Olsen, all approaching 5,400 up to 6,500 in Acuna. Games in Miami in a dome there. Trevor Rogers, a solid real-life pitcher here. Going up against one of the best offenses in baseball. Any Braves for you here tonight implied to score over five runs. And then any Marlins against Max Freed, just banking on Max Freed just not being there like we saw in his first start there. Yeah, my guy Sean yep. B in the chat calling his calling his shot, saying Acuna gets his first bomb of the night. I don't hate that. I mean, this Braves team, yeah, they, they all look sub 10%. They look good. Uh, they do get a little bit of a park downgrade, but, man, their numbers against Rodgers, um, you know, against – right. I'm sorry, left-handed pitching on the road look very good. And uh, Rodgers only striking out 22% of right-handed hitters last year. Fire up these Braves, man. They got shown up yesterday. Had a day to think about it. Now let's go out there and, you know, beat those Marlins. And uh, hopefully they can get it done. And uh, on the other side, yeah, it's Jake Berger or Bust. For me, I had the misfortune of playing Marcus Stroman the other day and saw Berger take him over the wall in New York. And uh, I think he's the only one. I said it earlier, Nades. 
he's the only one, in my opinion, that has, you know, tons of pop. I know Jazz has a little bit, but has tons of pop. So uh, Solaire's gone now, so he's obviously no longer in that lineup. But it's Berger or Bust in that lineup, and I'll be fading this uh, Marlins team tonight. Yeah, Jake Berger, anytime against the lefty, lefty smasher, historic lefty smasher. Love him. He's obviously an elite one-off hit in third. You can play him at first or third base as well. He's up to 4,800, so you do have to pay for him. Um, last year, we got him a, a lot in the low 3Ks, which was nice to see. Um, this year, DraftKings definitely adjusted their pricing there to to get Jake Berger, especially against the lefty. So I think he's solid. But on the Braves, I do like these Braves quite a bit. They're one of my five stacks that I listed over in the slate plan at shipanation.com here. I really, really, really love a wraparound stack here for Atlanta tonight. Don't sleep on my guy, Orlando Arcia, former Brewer great, um, fielder, Brewer great fielder. Um, he couldn't hit his way out of a wet paper bag in Milwaukee. Comes to Atlanta, gets surrounded by a bunch of good hitters, just hides down there in the eighth spot and just secretly put together an amazing season last year, an all-star, mind you. But he had a 325 expected ISO last year against left-handed pitching on the road. And just an 18% strikeout rate. Love him. You wrap him around to Acuna, Albies, Riley, Olsen, Ozuna. Love all five of those. Love Arcia. So that's six hitters. Naturally, that just means I love them as a stack. They are expensive. You do have to uh, make some sacrifices at the pitching um, to, to fit them. But could pay good dividends here tonight. Guaranteed 19 at-bats as well. And pretty low ownership um, overall as a total stack. Orlando Arcia, my favorite guy in that lineup, though, just with his $3,600 price point at a shortstop position that historically isn't great. Um, I like him a ton. And then Austin Riley, always against the lefty. Um, absolutely love him. So love the Braves a ton. Jake Berger only for me on the Marlins side. Let's head to another great hitting environment game, kind of the nature of the slate here. Cincinnati Reds, Chicago White Sox, 55, 60 degree, 55 degrees, but about 20 mile an hour winds um, blown out to dead center field here. Reds implied to score almost five and a half runs here facing Chris Flexen, who gets hit hard, doesn't strike anybody out against an offense that is young overall, but loaded with power. I love these Reds. My Reds are the favorite stack of the night for me. Throw it over to you. Break this one down. Abbott on the mound. Chris Flexen on the mound. Any White Sox, any Reds for you tonight, Hamwich? Yeah, no White Sox for me. I think I think Robert's still out, right? And uh, my favorite Chicago White Sox, Tim Anderson, playing down there in Miami now. So can't pick on him anymore in Chicago. But, yeah, you said it. I mean, I mean this, uh, this Flexen character – Striking out 13% of right-handed hitters. No thank you for there. So I actually like the reverse splits kind of guys tonight. Those Reds, Jonathan Indias of the world, and Carsey on Strand, uh, Steer, all the right-handed hitters. And then also, I can't leave out my guy, Ellie De La Cruz. He has multiple stolen base upside every single night. Uh, showing a little bit of power. I know he hit a, a bomb the other night, went double dong the other night, including an inside-the-park home run. So, yeah, load up on these righties, in my opinion. I'm glad to see that you, you're on them as well. Uh, and then I'll throw in Ellie De La Cruz as well uh, from the left-handed side of the plate. Yeah, lock and load these reds tonight. I think they go off as well. Yeah, I love these reds. And I'm going right back to the reach-around wraparound stack. Ellie De La Cruz, Nick Martini. Love my boy, Nick Martini. Last time he was in my core report, hit a little double dong. Hey, I don't need two home runs tonight. If you give me one, I'd be more than happy at your $3,600 price point. So, Love Ellie De La Cruz down there. Love Nick Martini. Love India. Love Encarnacion. Love Steer. Will Benson at $3,800 hitting in the two spot tonight. Love him as well. These Reds, I'm loading the wagon on the Reds. My favorite stack. Not going to be a contrarian take, but do think with the Blue Jays garnering as much ownership as they're projected to get right now, these Reds, um, I, I think, are my favorite offense by far. So I'm loading the wagon on them. On the White Sox side, no interest for me picking on Abbott. It is good hitting conditions, but you got to make contact with the baseball and uh, for, for it to go anywhere. I think Abbott can get some swing and misses here. I think he's a solid pitcher option on this slate at 8,200. That uh, decent Garner and a decent amount of ownership right now probably comes in about 18 to, to 24 percent, somewhere in that ballpark um, I'm seeing, but I do think he's a good option. No White Sox bats for me. Jump to another game here. Battle of two Texas teams here. You got the Rangers. You got the Astros. Dunning on the mound. J.P. France on the mound. These Rangers, they're not at home against the righty, but I still do like them a ton here tonight. Guaranteed ninth thing at bats. They're on the road facing a righty. 
Historically, they smash right-handed pitching more at home than on the road, but you still got Adoles Garcia in there. Wyatt Langford, Corey Seager, Marcus Semien. Got some cheap guys, Evan Carter, who uh, I believe has smashed France in his limited sample. I mean, just hits this guy hard. Has three doubles in his career against JP France. So hit on the Rangers, hit on the Astros. One of the highest implied run totals on the slate here in Houston. Yeah, this is my favorite game of the night. I think it pops off. Uh, interesting note in this game. Rivalry renewed. They played last weekend as well. Now they're, they're running it back. Houston Astros, they've had five relief pitchers over the last two days throw 25-plus pitches. So their bullpen is taxed. They're taking on J.P. France, who's not a very good pitcher to begin with. Nades alluded to it a minute ago, 27 outs. We get full nine innings out of them. I think these Rangers are my favorite stack. One through four for me is who would be um, – uh, in, on my main team, I wouldn't get into Evan Carter, Josh Smith, and Heim. Uh, I think you can play him in MME for certain. But, yeah, it says one through four for me. I think they do a lot of damage tonight, and they score, you know, seven-plus runs. And I think they're on the winner tonight, Nate. I really like the Rangers. Then on the other side, I think the Astros are great play, too. Dane Dunning, 20% strikeout rate to both sides of the plate. I think these Astros back home, they've been embarrassed the last two days. In Kansas City, your guy, your dong. Has a 312 expected ISO tonight. Uh, love the lefties. Love the righties. Obviously, you can play Kyle Tucker. Um, great matchup all around the board. I think this game goes over the posted total. And I think the Rangers, I like the Rangers better than the Astros tonight for Daily Fantasy. Should be fireworks down in our sister city. It's Houston, Nades. We're going to have liftoff for the nation. We're going to have liftoff in Houston, baby, tonight. Down in the deep in the heart of Texas. Yeah, hope the liftoff is on the Texas side because I love the Texas bats here tonight. Adolis Garcia, Marcus Semien, two fly ball righties. And looking at last season's numbers, France struck out just 14% of right-handed hitters. They, they struck almost a 200 ISO and a fly ball rate north of 30%. Give me some Adolis. Give me some Marcus Semien. Give me some Wyatt Langford. Three righties there with the power, with fly ball rates, and then add in around those guys. Those are kind of my three building blocks. Throwing in Everett Carter, throwing a Jonah Heim, a Jared Walsh, any of those value guys down there. Obviously, a Corey Seager um, at the shortstop position. So, I love the Rangers. One through nine, firmly in play. I get a little bit different just when I'm stacking a team. And if I believe in the team, I like the other guys because even a walk, right? They can steal the base with the new rules, get in there, run scored, RBIs, everything. The points add up quickly when you're. Uh, when you're stacking up a team and everybody just goes in there and stacks up one through four, one through five. So I always love including the seven, eight, nine hitters um, gets you a little different there. So I love those guys on the Astros side, Jordan, Kyle Tucker would be my two favorite guys, just reverse splits guys against Dean Dunning. Outside of that, Yanner Diaz, I think is a solid catcher option. Um, Chaz McCormick, but not looking to stack the Astros, just one offs or a mini stack in an Alvarez and Kyle Tucker, even though you do have to pay for it. Just a, Attacking those reverse splits of Dane Dunning there. Jump into the next game, which I think is an easy cross-off game. It's the Cubs. It's the Mariners. Jordan Hick, Jordan Wicks, excuse me, on the mound. Bryce Miller for the Mariners. Both teams implied to score right around four runs or so. No bats for me in this one, but do you see anything I'm missing here, Seattle, Chicago? Yeah, a little bit of interest in Bryce Miller, so no Cubs for me. I would just pay attention to um, to how many righties in there. If I get six-plus righties in there for the Cubs, I'm all over uh, Bryce Miller. And then on the other side, not a ton of interest, so I won't be stacking these Mariners. Uh, two names that I want to throw out, though, Julio Rodriguez. I like him batting second. Uh, righty power against uh, Wicks, I don't mind. So give me him. And then number two would be Ty France. If he's in the lineup batting third, I would like those two righties for me, but definitely not stacking this game. Uh, big ballpark, and so not going to be a lot of runs, I don't think. So I'm just going to pay attention to that Cubs lineup tonight. Yeah, no, excellent breakdown there. I'm not going to even one-offs in that game. Um, so easy cross-off, can't play them all. 11 games on the slate, 12 with the rain out. That's one I'm crossing off. But let's jump to this next one. I do have some interest, and I think I'm going to be – Kind of an on an island here, but um, it's the Nationals. It's the Athletics. Paul Blackburn, I like a ton. Jake Irvin, I don't like very much at all. He grades very poorly in our pitcher rankings as well, but I do think he picks up some 
ownership just due to his price at 5,200 against historically a pretty weak offense in general in Oakland allows you to do a lot with your bats. Any interest in any hitters in this one, Nationals Athletics here in Oakland, not at the greatest hitters park, but still cheap bats here to go around. Yeah, I'll, I like uh, I like uh, Blackburn tonight, so we're together on there. Uh, bad offense, decent strikeout rate pitcher, and a ballpark upgrade. Yeah, give me some Blackburn. Then the A's, I don't, I don't love the A's, but I would, I wouldn't mind playing them. Um, uh, you know, as a contrarian stack, if you will, against a pitcher that we think is going to be highly owned. I don't think it's very good. The A's strike out a bunch, but hey, Irvin doesn't strike out a whole lot of people, so I think that uh, they can mitigate that. We can get a Gilaf homer or two. Get some of those guys, Blade to go yard. I don't mind this A's team if you just wanted to put it in the lotto, you know, play five five guys in that and hope they go off and they're on the winner. Hey, playing with my guy Gaussman, you never know what might happen. Yeah, no. Um, no nationals for me. Um, I just got it won't be a, a witching hour shelf. I didn't bring up my guy CJ Abrams, was my staple dude last year, but his price is up to 4500 now. Don't love him a ton here. Um, in, in this spot. Jolly Gallo has is kind of a Cheap first base power boom bust guy. Um, if you want to go look there, but I like Blackburn enough on the slate, I will be using him in one of my teams. So no nationals for me, but I do like these athletics in particular. These lefties looking at last season numbers for Jake Irvin struck out just 17% of left handed hitters. Opposing lefties hit for a 222 ISO and had a fly ball rate of 35% to left handed hitters. You got my guy Seth Brown. Lefty, fly ball guy, smashes right-handed pitching. Love Seth Brown. Love J.J. Blade. Love these other lefties, Lawrence Butler, Ryan Noda. They're very cheap. I don't think I'm five-man stacking these guys. Throwing a Abraham Toro switch hitter up there at 2,700 at third base. You got the power of Zach Giloff. Don't think these athletics are the craziest. I like them more as a mini stack just because I don't think as a full five-man they can match the upside of other offenses on the slate. But Seth Brown, my favorite play by far in this lineup. Like throwing in a Ryan Noda, a Lawrence Butler, J.J. Blade um, is kind of where I'm looking there. But I really like Seth Brown a lot at 2,800. And uh, I think he has a good shot to, to hit one over the wall here tonight um, in, in Oakland. So I do like him. Let's jump to the next game here, Cardinals and the D-backs. And I think this is a pretty interesting game just because these D the both pitchers I don't think are very good at all, Stephen Matz and Brandon Pifat. Cardinals guaranteed 19 at bats here in Arizona. Implied to score right over a little over four and a half runs. Talk about Goldschmidt. Talk about Contreras. Nolan Gorman, who's been red hot this year. Lars Newtbar there against the weak pitcher in PFA. And then talk about these D backs who don't look to be picking up much ownership at all against Steven Matz here. And power speed littered throughout this lineup. Really like me some Randall Grechuk down there at 3,900 as a value bat. But Take it away, St. Louis, Arizona. Yeah, we got Goldie coming home to the desert. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt returning to face his former mates in Arizona. Certainly don't mind him. Don't mind Arenado. Don't mind that stack, really. I mean, we, Brandon P. Fought, we picked on him all season long last year. I would get Gorman in there if I was going to stack it up. You said Lars Newbar. Don't mind that play as well. Uh, so don't mind the Cardinals. I would have them, you know, four or five ranked stack. And then on the D-back side, I'm glad you said it because I'm with you on that. I mean, these, these D-backs have beat up Spencer Strider. They've beat up Max Freed. Now they come home and take on soft tossing Steven Matz back at home, projected to have eight right-handed hitters in the lineup, notable left-handed masters, Eugenio Suarez, Christian Walker, uh, Goriel. I mean, the list goes on and on, not to mention Corbin Carroll batting from the left-handed side. You said you like Grichik. He can do it as well. I think this D-backs team needs very, very sneaky tonight, uh, and they can beat up on Matt's very quickly out in the desert. Yeah, don't sleep on our guy, Blaze Alexander. And prospect, I think he hit a bomb last night, right, or the um, day before, and he's just 3,500 at a shortstop position. Looking at his numbers, he's got a 286 ISO amongst his 24 plate appearances this season against left-handed pitching. Christian Walker, historic lefty masher. Randall Grichuk, lefty masher. Kettle Marte, Kevin Newman, Lords Giriel. I mean, right there, six hitters that all have an ISO north of 180 against left-handed pitching over the course of this season and last season. So 
like all those, I like the D-backs as a stack here. Don't mind that they're at home here. Grichuk, my favorite player, then followed by Christian Walker, Blaze Alexander as well. Really like that two-man stack if you can't afford the full man stack there because you want to spend up on pitching, spend up on some of those other offenses because the top order of the D-backs is expensive. Grichuk's 3,900, Blaze Alexander's 3,500, both smash lefties. Um, I think that's a great two-man stack there, projected to hit 7-8 as it stands right now here in Arizona. On the Cardinals side, really like Nolan Gorman. Think he's a great option. Lars Newpar, that's a good two man stack there. A little reverse splits against PFOT. And then it's just more stacking against a bad pitcher with guaranteed ninth inning at bats for the Cardinals. Don't think they're the craziest takes or the craziest stack. I like other offenses more personally, um, where I'm looking at. Definitely put the D backs ahead of them in terms of stacking personally here tonight. That takes us to the last game of the evening here, Hamwich. It's San Diego Padres. It's the Dodgers. It's a Friday night, late night Dodgers facing Michael King here at home. Is it going to be a stack up the Dodgers in L.A., go to sleep, wake up to more cheese in your pocket, or are you fading the Dodgers here tonight? Don't think the ownership really matters to a ton because they are expensive and just don't think they get a ton of ownership overall. Are implied to score over five runs here against Michael King and company. Yeah, should be an interesting contest for sure. And I know Hoops looking at his chops, Friday Night Dodgers at home. But, man, I have a little bit of respect for this Michael King character striking out 30% of the batters from uh, the right-handed side of the plate and almost 28% from the left-handed side of the plate from, from last year's numbers. Uh, man, it's going to be tough to play those guys. I mean, obviously you can play Betts, Atani, and uh, and Freeman. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb, Nades. I'm going to cross them off. Not going to play any Dodgers tonight. Not going to play any Padres either. Uh, I talked about um, uh, Yamamoto, you know, and how he got roughed up his first start. But I do think he's got some potential. Now he's back, I quote unquote, home, and he'll 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 pitch at home tonight. Uh, so no interest in this in this San Diego team. I'm going to cross this one off. Go to bed. Hopefully sweat this one off, and uh, hopefully it doesn't beat me. And and you and uh, Hoop are waking up to more cheese in your pocket. Yeah, no, I mean, hitting conditions, about 60 degrees, slight wind blowing out, but it's basically neutral there in Dodger Stadium. I think they're fine, but at their price points, I mean, they're very expensive to stack up as an offense, and I just like other spots more at a cheaper overall stack rate that I think can match them. Michael King's respectable enough, at, at least his numbers so far um, over the, the course, that it's just mini stacks or one-offs for me, Otani, Max Muncy, the two lefties there kind of highlight the right the the lead for me. Um, and then obviously hashtag always Mookie, right? Um, stolen base threat there, always home run power. But don't think I'm going to stack up the Dodgers tonight, which I think is um, a little bit crazy to say, but it's just at their prices and in their salaries, I'd rather stack up the Braves offense in Miami at a similar price point than go to these Dodgers here at home. Braves obviously guaranteed ninth inning at bats. Um, but outside of that, one-offs I think are fine. No Padres for me against Yamamoto. Yamamoto, one of my three favorite pitchers on the slate up at the top tier. How much? That's all 11 games. I talked. We talked pitching. We talked stacks. You want to throw it over and give a home run call for the people here before we get on out of here on this Friday. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go. I'm going to go a little different. I'm going to give one. I'm not going to give Mookie out, Nate. I know you yell at me when I give out Mookie. That's too easy. I'm going to go to my guy taking on this brew crew. I'm going to do this for everyone in Wisconsin, all my friends in Wisconsin. Give me some Gunner Henderson tonight. Take fastball Freddy right over that right field wall. Maybe he hits that warehouse out there. But give me some Gunnar Henderson leading off tonight for the O's to go deep against your boy, fastball Freddy. Well, he goes with a little Gunnar Henderson against my favorite pitcher on the slate. I'm going to do my favorite stack of the evening going back to the cincinnati reds in chicago nice value outfielder nick martini 3600 i think he puts one over the wall off of chris flexen he's got good numbers ranks well in our hitter rankings over here he's cheap all things check out so i like me some nick martini here tonight hamwich we did it we gave them everything that they needed I got my core up. The slate plans up. Our projections are getting updated throughout the day. They just got updated about an hour ago as the lineups get confirmed. We got the starting lineups page, hitter rankings, pitcher rankings, 
we got everything for the people over here. I'm sure your core is going to go up soon. Any final closing remarks for the people before we get them out of here and go enjoy our weekend? Yeah, no, good luck in your contest tonight. Uh, to me, some the, the top-ranked pitchers are where, where you're going to need to be. You're going to have to find some value bats, in my opinion. So hopefully we'll see you back in the winner's circle. Nades, hopefully we'll, we'll be sweating another one out with you, and you can have another 2K shipper tonight. But it should be fun. And I'll be uh, I'll be here all weekend doing the slate plan, doing doing the course. So looking forward to it. And we'll be back Monday as well. Yeah, as always, appreciate everyone watching. If you are not a member yet and you want access to that slate plan that I did, my core report, our starting lineup page, hitter, pitcher rankings, everything like that. Use that promo code HOOP15, gets you 15% off for life. Any package you do choose, highly suggest the monthly package for all access. Comes out to about $2 a day, 2 to $3 a day, but with the discount there, no better rate in the industry there. But good luck tonight. Hope to see those Ship and Nation logos at the top. For Hamwich, I'm Nate Zafai. Let's ship it.